Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habita fillah I just received good news from one of our brothers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in him with ilm al-nafi wa rizqan tayyib wa amal al-mutaqabbil and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with tawfiq and ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it's easy to talk about the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but it's so much more difficult to practice and this brother may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him <coughs> and bless him with tawfiq he asked what kind of advice <coughs> can you give regarding someone who has been accepted into Jamaa Islamiyah to the Islamic University of Medina as far as how to use their uh, how should a student of knowledge manage his time once accepted and in fact this advice goes to anyone who's seeking knowledge and that is exactly what we've been spending the past couple of days going over Imam uh, Muhammad ibn the Wahhab al Wasabi, Rahmatullahi, Rahmatin Wasiya, his treaties. So I think the best advice would not come from me, would, would, would come from the ulama. And we will try to put it in context of what was asked. <clears throat> and so he mentioned some very important advices. The first thing is sincerity to Allah, that you have to have ikhlas. So even on this journey that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up for you. Never forget that. <clears throat> Always remember that Nama Minni Amillah that Allah has chosen you and favored you over much of his creation. Much of his creation. So with that being the case, make sure that you are always working on being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this journey you're about to embark on, that it's a serious journey. And as we mentioned, Talib al ilm Talib al Jannah, seeking, uh, seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So make sure that you are reminding yourself that you're on the path to paradise. That that's exactly what you're doing. The Prophet ﷺ said, Men salaka Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah. So just remember that and that will help you with your sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put everything on the scale when you get to Medina on that scale of sincerity check in yourself and even those people around you meaning that those people if they invite you because what you find is there will be people who will try to recruit you to go to their jama'at to their uh, his, their ahzab to, be, to, be, to become a hizbi there will be people recruiting you. People saying, don't sit with this one. Don't go with those brothers. They're over there and they have this. Don't do this. Don't do that. Be with us. Be with the brothers. Only sit with Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so. So you want to be careful because you're already, uh, from this particular individual, is a Salafi Talib al-Ilm. So you already have some tools to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Do not go to Medina and let people cut off the path to khair. And this is what Sheikh Suleiman al was, he, was, he mentioned about someone, uh, I think they were warning about a certain ulama. And he referred to those people, those alleged students of knowledge who warn against the, the imams of the sunnah and they warn the students to go to the imams of the sunnah. He said that they're the qita'at-turq. He said they are the ones who are cutting off the path. Meaning that they are the ones cutting off the path to good. Like highway bandits, like robbers. And that's a severe punishment in Islam. It's a major sin and it's it uh, has a severe punishment in the shara. So it shows you, you want to be sincere and you don't want to let anybody distract you from your benefit. You have this chance. Do not let anyone distract you from that. Uh, another important, and there's so many nasus to... Uh, benefit us and just so the people who are uh, no one gets uh, upset and hurt uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and they, and they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone sincerely and for him is the religion another piece of advice that Imam mentioned he said being patient so this whole process that you're going to be is going to be patient it's going to require patience living in Saudi Arabia takes a lot of patience dealing with administrative issues and other things massive amounts of patience the lifestyle 
patience, especially for those who are married. So you're on a patient path. And those who are not married, it takes patience to stay away from the Muharramat. To stay away from things, to stay away from compromising. Don't just jump up because a lot of single guys, young guys who have a little fire, you're going to be inclined. Of course, you need to get married and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's beautiful. But do not rush to j just marry uh, anyone just because, even just because she may have good religion. She may be half of the Quran. She may be this. But still, you may not be compatible. And it may cause you a lot of problems in the future because of other things. Because she might not be from your country. She may be from a, a, a third world country or whatever the case may be. And may have difficult coming to your country. So there's many kind of issues that you want to be cognizant of and be patient be patient find someone if you do that's compatible and that you see a future with uh so everything requires patience be patient on the harms that are going to come with seeking the knowledge and come with delivering the knowledge and come with even approaching the path to knowledge and that come with life you need patience uh, another important thing that many of the students of knowledge advise in this imam advise fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh you will believe if you fear Allah he will make for you a criterion and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, fear Allah and Allah will teach you so know that if you want to benefit in your, your path of talib al-ilm taqwa Allah is going to teach you Yes, you're, you're striving. You're going to get distracted. You can spend a lot of money on books. You can spend a lot of money on wasted things like going to the restaurants and do this. But you need to put yourself on a schedule. Put yourself on a barnamage. And use your time wisely. Allocate only, uh, allocate only so much time for this. And so much time for that. And massive amounts of time for your study. Because this is it. This is that opportunity. These, you know, if you make it through these, uh, probably anywhere from at a minimum of four to eight years of your life that you're going to dedicate is going to require patience. It's going to require you uh, making yourself a program, and you're going to need to fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala through the whole journey until you're in the grave. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can, and that will be the thing that will assist you. Because if you fear Allah, then all those obstacles for the Talib al-Ilm, a lot of them come back to shahwat, you know, to desires, and shubuhat, and, you know, doubtful things, whether it be from Ahl al-Bid'a, uh, or, or whether it be from uh, doubt from Ahl al-Kufr. So all of that, by fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can, that's going to be a shield. The taqwa is going to be a provision, and it's going to be a shield, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already said that he, tabarak wa ta'ala, if you fear him, he will teach you. Uh, be persistent in seeking knowledge. Okay, you're already in a program. Stick with the curriculum that you have to study. And then take some durus outside with the scholars. Because there's knowledge you're going to get in those halaqat al-ilm. You will not get in the university. And likewise, you are being sponsored to study in that university. So that's your job. That's your main job. And there's nothing but benefit going to be in that. So it's a beautiful job. So spend your time. Stick with your, your curriculum. But definitely find time. Whatever, depending on the students. Some students can spend hours with Mashaikh and do their job. Other students can only do it once or twice a week. They can go to a particular dars. Whatever it is, sit with some of those great mountains of knowledge. And they're, they're, you shouldn't even be going to Medina and leaving Medina without sitting with Sheikh Imam, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Sheikhna Al Muhaddith, Imam Abdul Masan Al Abad. There's no doubt now that you're in Medina or you're going to be in Medina, do not leave Medina when these elders visit Sheikh Rabi. He also lives in Medina. When I was there, he wasn't there. Uh, other many beautiful Mashaikh and gain their benefit. Gain their benefit. Sheikh Suleiman Raheli, Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Ubaid Jabri, Sheikh, you know, Sheikh Imam uh, Saleh Suhaimi, uh, Imam Ali Nasser Faqi. You know, get in those durus, especially with those major scholars. Get with them and sit and learn. Especially, if nothing else, Sheikh Abdul Masih, get in some of those durus. Because he teaches usually five and six days a week. 
Um, I don't know what he's doing now, but get with that imam while he's still with us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. I mean, and that's a part of your uh, continuity in seeking knowledge. Also, make sure that you, uh, you know, be far away from the people of Bid'ah, no doubt. Do not sit with people who are going to cut, you know, tech theories. People who are talking about major messiahs. They're, they're, you know, busying your mind with things that you don't need to be involved with. Right now, you're just trying to focus on your curriculum, strengthen your Arabic, if that's the point that you're at, and build. So, al-ilm, it comes in stages. It comes in stages. It's not going to come overnight. So, so don't overbear yourself stick with your curriculum and if you can do something outside then that is a ni'mah min ni'amillah go to those dawrat when they come when they have the uh the times for the the scholars when they come together for knowledge uh to share knowledge in those lectures uh likewise be vigilant of course with your health in your time save your time in your health the Prophet ﷺ said, Two blessings are used improperly by many of the people. Uh, that uh, two things are used improperly by most of the people. The health and your time. And so those are the things that you have there. Don't just eat garbage food. Get yourself even on a little program. Even if it's walking. Walking to the durus. Walking to the haram. Whatever. Get, you're going to be in Medina. This is just like, I'm excited. <laughs> Can I go with you? Because uh, there's there's nothing like that life. I used to try to make my Jumwas at least in the Haram. I used to sit with Sheikh Abdul Masin and go. I mean, you're just going to, you know, Allah is just giving you so much. You've got to just thank Allah. So make sure you increase your Ibadah. Increase your Ibadah. Pray in the Haram as much as possible. If you sat in the haram with the durus, that would suffice you. There's so many, so many ulama, so many scholars of particular sciences in there. That alone is sufficient. But try to, you know, benefit, visit Mashaikh. When you have questions, go to the scholars. They're there. They're going to be right there. You're going to see them in the grocery store. So go. Um, also, the Sheikh mentioned, he said, giving importance to the Arabic language. So if you're going to start with the Sha'aba, then go and go hard in the paint. Hit it hard. Really, uh, you know, get strength and master those books. Because once you do that, that's going to make your journey in the colleges so much uh, easier by having strength in the language. But if your language is weak, then it's going to, it's going to affect you and it's going to be uh, more difficult for you if you study fiqh, if you study, if you go into the Quran, Kulia, if you go into Hadith, you go into uh, Asul al-Din, whatever it is that you want to have the tools and strength to be able to go in there strong and benefit from your, your coursework. Be patient, again, because that is going to be, you're on a journey and you do not want to give up that journey for anything unless, you know, Qadr Allah ma sha fa'al, something bigger than what you, you know, maybe your family, family needs, whatever the case may be. But strive your best to be, to stick that journey out and graduate. Uh, also, this is an important piece of advice the Imam mentioned in this, in his Sheikh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarmu, said this to us when we first got to the Maj, he mentioned avoiding controversial argumentation. Meaning, don't get involved in so much controversy. Kathra taqil wa qal. It's collected in the Tirmidhi, in his Jami'i, on Abu Osama al-Bahali, who said, the, pro the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, a people did not become misguided from the guidance they were upon except after they were given to debate. SubhanAllah. If you think about that, how many people, I can tell you stories about so many people in various uh, institutions who became so deviant because they got involved in argumentation, they got into debate, they got in issues way above their head. They jumped from the Masail uh, and, and the Usul for the beginners and they were up and dealing with major issues of takfir and this and that and the other and then they go astray. They either became takfiri themselves, 
they some of them became so so extreme and became agents later and even disbelievers you know they even left uh, islam and you know worked for how many intelligence agencies so my point is ahabatifillah is do not get into controversial debate because this will only confuse you it would only waste your time it would only cause your heart to harden but keep your heart open and strive and those are the main advices that are probably relevant for your situation ta'ala, that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab uh, al-Wasabi rahmatullahi I mentioned but this is very important for us and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us all with ilm al-nafi rizkin tayyibu amal al-muttaqabili and bless all the brothers and sisters who are on the journey of seeking knowledge especially ilm al-sahih ilm al-kitabi la wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the maraqis of sunnah from the places of sunnah where the people are learning the book of Allah and learning the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the madhab of Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'a, the Madhab of the Salaf al Saleh, the Madhab and Minhaj of Sahabat al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'in, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabi Muhammad.